Hey Caps, it's Ed, National Trust Bud here. Today I've got a quick race preview for you for the Immortal Stourhead 10K. Thanks for joining me on the channel, it's always appreciated. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. If you've been enjoying the content as well, give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Mucho gracias. The Stourhead 10K is an event that I last did back in 2019. Seems like only yesterday, but it was many days ago in fact. There's a load of other events going on around the 10K on Saturday. There's an Acrobike Mega Sprint. You've also got the Middle Distance and Triple Crown. I'm just doing the 10K though, there's loads of other maniacs that are going to do more stuff. Swimming and biking and all sorts. Best of luck to Gunners by the way. Best of luck, buddy. Good to be back to racing again on a 10K road and trail route. It goes around the beautiful Stourhead Estate. This is one of those races, though, where I get to a certain point and I'm going to be thinking, I really need to do some more hill training. There's a good 50% of quiet roads here, along with some forest trails. I think my first attempt, I logged about 564 feet of elevation over the route. I think most of that is over miles two and three. There's a steady climb and you've got a flatter section after that there is a bit more climbing to be done though towards the end i think there's another 140 foot climb in the last half a mile or something lovely time on the last effort was 45 minutes 34 an average pace of 7 minutes 11 seconds per mile so it'd be great to improve on that and i think i probably can by quite a considerable margin i think i smashed it out way too fast in the first mile on the last attempt tactics then were really try and make use of the downhill i think i ran about six minutes 15 seconds for the first mile which is yeah it's probably a bad idea although maybe not you may as well get the advantage there of the downhill in the first mile and bank a little bit of time tried to bed in at around about seven minutes 30 for the next couple of miles on those steady climbs things even out a bit after that on miles four and five just saving some power for that nasty final climb at the very end it's a real leg destroyer that one i guess if i'm going to make predictions about the race i think i can probably get in under 44 minutes if i really push things i'm not perhaps at the best of fitness right now still have days where i feel really sapped of energy after having the virus a few weeks back i think i was like 21st position last time with that 45 34 so I think I can improve on that. Shoe choice though is a bit of a difficult one with this race. There's quite a few different terrains and surfaces that you have to contend with. I don't recall myself getting particularly muddy or dirty and sort of running through some really slippery areas at all last time. I think I used the Terrakiger 5 and yeah it worked okay but I mean that's not the lightest or most sort of propulsive shoe in the world. I think the main worry I suppose is the forest based section of the route where you might have had some rain and things might be a little bit boggy or squidgy. There's just so many different variables you can't really know what it's going to be like in there. At least over the next few days it does appear to be pretty much dry in this local area. Although temps could get up to about 20 degrees and I know that the organisers have put out an extra drink station for the bike section that's going on a little later. I'm certainly going to be taking some water with me on my run. You might say what for a 10k but if it's going to get warm I always struggle in the warm temperatures and if there's nowhere easy to fill up or grab drinks on the way then I'm going to need to take something with me this time. It's not my preference, but if that's what I've got to do, then that's what I've got to do. The Kyger 5s felt a little bit like overkill last time in terms of outsole grip. As I say, the shoe isn't all that heavy, but I think I can probably get away with more of a road shoe this time around, perhaps going with something a little lighter and a little less trail-like on this occasion. I think in fairness here, the ratio is probably about right to do that any more trail one i think it would be better to stick with a trail based shoe and certainly if it was in the winter i wouldn't consider using a road shoe for this one so what should i opt for what are the options well the sen 8's creeping up towards 100 miles that would be probably my top option i know the shoe really well i know i can perform in it as well especially at 10k pace it seems to be getting better and better the more i use it as well so certainly need to include this one in the running 
There's a gravelly section. I don't really feel there's any major problems utilizing this shoe. Perhaps not ideal if there's a muddy area. I think the rubber here is going to be a little bit smooth and slippery. Although you do have the slightly more slat based section here on the medial side of the shoe. Now, just coming for testing is the Fuel Cell Super Comp Pacer from New Balance. I'm not going to throw this shoe straight into racing duties, though. That seems a bit nasty of me, especially considering the colour and the route. I have been getting some miles into the shoe, though, and I am enjoying it. So do stay tuned for a review of this one coming up very soon. Mm -hmm. I think I'd probably discount the Adios Pro 2 from this one. The rubber there is just the more smooth stuff that we've got on the Sen 8 on the lateral side, and I think it's probably a bit of an overkill in terms of cushion really for a 10k how about the puma dv8 nitro elite that's got a more lug like feel packed into the outsole there and it's super light then you've got the slightly less stable but incredible outsole of the rc elite version one from new balance that's still got the best forefoot to midfoot outsole pattern that i've tried on any shoe well, I mean, I could just go with the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, couldn't I? I've got several pairs of the Next Percent knocking around. In the forest, the Kakuso version would look really nice, actually, wouldn't it? I mean, it's going to be the best propulsion on the paths and the roads. And let's not forget that those elite Kenyan athletes are using the Vaporfly Next Percent on those compacted dirt roads with no problem at all. In fact, every time I think about that, they just utilise whatever shoe on those roads. It works. I could even go for the whole hog and choose the Alpha Fly next percent. Seems bonkers, really. I would never have considered that like three years ago. Not that the shoe was out, but if it had been out, I just would not have considered using that shoe for this race. But I do now. How times have changed. I could benefit from the thicker rubber traction pattern that we have on the front of the Alpha Fly. And of course, you have the hill destroying air pods as well. That will just make going up the hills barely an inconvenience. I do find the AirPods and a carbon plate actually a real benefit going uphill. If you found that as well, let me know in the comments below. Although the watermelon version of the Alpha Fly that I've got at the moment, that's kind of in the rotation as it were, will get pretty trashed using it in the forest, but do I really care? No, not really. It's going to come out a great deal dirtier than when I went into the forest, but these shoes are made to be used, they're tools. They're not to be pampered or babied. You just got to get them on foot and enjoy them. I think with the Kaiga 8 coming in much heavier than the Terra Kaiga 5, I don't think I'd go back and use that shoe for this race. Just a more out and out trail shoe now with a bit more protection. That's not really what I need here. There's no real technical sections to this race. Not that I remember anyway. So I think I'll probably assess the weather and I'm going to go for either the Sen 8 or perhaps the Alpha Fly. What do you reckon I should select for this one, guys? I'm really excited about doing another race. Been a while, been a long while. Lots coming up as well. Martok 10K next month. And I have signed myself up for some half marathons later in the year. Let me know your thoughts and opinions and predict my time down in the comments. Musical interlude time. I discovered Damon Alburn has released a new album. Just completely missed it. It's not an awful lot of a fanfare, I suppose, about this one. The Nearer the Fountain more pure the steam flows what a great album title that is the first track which is the title track of the album is bordering on ambient i suppose very calming music this perhaps if you're going out on a long run you'll really get the brain thinking ticking over you know thoughts really long drawn out sort of sounds here the cormorant is also a similar vibe beautiful chord changes though when they do happen it's almost like i'm being transported back to sort of like the mid 90s there with some of the sounds of damon alban's voice it's a beautiful reverb on there you can almost sort of sense he's there just in the corner singing away royal morning blue has a very diy feel about it and like drum machines in the background there i guess there's almost like a hint of tom york about some of it not quite as technological i suppose but a more human feel on combustion i almost get the sound of roxy music you've got some wild jazzy brass giraffe trumpet c is bizarre some wonderful drawn out piano chords i could imagine sitting listening to this album while just watching the sea just come in the waves crashing there a beautiful thing it's very odd you may not like it at all if you like your pop music you know three minutes and that's it but you should check this one out if you like something that's a little different damon alburn 
with his new album, The Nearer the Fountain, The More Pure the Steam Flows. Right, I hope I've chilled you all out with that musical interlude. If you haven't done so already, guys, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch the new videos for you. And it really does help us out if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.